So we're on to the second step of this process, which would be to um, work on bringing in that uh, the audio file alongside the visuals that you want to try and use. So this part gets a little bit tricky, and unfortunately there's not an easy or really a great way for me to, to coach you through how to do this part of it. It just really depends on if you're using the a sort of single video layer where you hand animate along with it, or if you're uh, bringing in uh, like drawings that you did elsewhere as frames and animating them or using stop motion. So there's, I'm going to show you a couple different options. Uh, I don't love any of these options, but this is just like the best workaround that we have and you're going to have to kind of be flexible about it as you figure out how to do it. So, um, you know, the main thing would just be we want to come up and, you know, you're going to want to just make a new file so you can go to back to Photoshop and just go, you know, new and you always want to make sure that you're picking one that's like you know, film and video for us. We don't need it to be super duper high res. Uh, probably just 1080p is going to be great. So 1920 by 1080 at 72 pixels per inch. You just click create. Then you'll probably see these guides up here, which you can always get rid of if you want to by uh, going into view and then go down here to where um, you, you see the thing that says guides and then you just go to clear guides and that'll clear that out. But now you're going to want to like bring your uh, bring your images in right and so I've got different different versions of this queued up but remember to do that you can always go here to file and then go to um, you know just go down here to the scripts and use the load um, files into stack option if you have a bunch of like stop motion photographs or if you have a bunch of um, hand-drawn frames that you're gonna bring in or if you drew them in procreate or something you're gonna bring them in that's the button to push right so you would just click load files in the stack go to browse and then go find your files wherever they are that you've you know that you created so you want to make sure you have them organized if possible I would label label them each frame like one through however many it's a lot easier to organize but then you just sh sort of hold down the shift key and select all of them so they're all blue like this and click open and then uh, just click OK and it'll load those all in uh, one at a time so depending on your computer it'll take a little bit longer maybe and then you'll get all the images like stacked on top of each other there, right? So each one of those images is going to be a layer. But let's say, uh, let's just start with the simplest one. Let's say you want to go to, uh, and you just want to animate alongside uh, the thing just frame by frame and do it all in Photoshop. So uh, you can just click this one again. Forgive me for the train in the background. I live out in the country. And there's a lot of trains out here. So <laughs> so if, you, uh, if we went back to this again, and I'll just clear the guides. Um, so then, um, you know, the easiest thing for me to do would just be to go up here to layer and create, uh, just create a new blank video layer, right? So I'm just going to make a new video layer. It's just going to live over, live by itself. So here it is. And you'll see it down here in the timeline. And remember, if you can't see the timeline, like let's say your timeline isn't showing up, you know, you can always go back up here into window and go to timeline and click. So once you've got your video timeline set up, if you're just going to animate along with this frame by frame, you just need to bring in the audio file now, right? So that you can see it. And this is, or not even see it, just hear it. So this is the easiest, really the only way that you can do that to bring in an audio track, which is just to come down here in the timeline and you'll see the, there's these little buttons that go, that are next to the layer, uh, you know, your video layer that you just made this blank, right? You can click here and you can add a new a video group or you can add um, add you know another video file if you wanted to or something but so if you wanted a rotoscope you could go here and add a new video um, or add media and it'll put uh, the, the video underneath and then you can kind of rotoscope along with it and then delete that or turn that layer off later maybe but um so what we want to do is we want to add an audio track so if you click here on that button it'll say add audio and then you just need to go find the file so I have mine saved on the desktop so if I click open now that'll bring in this green line here at the bottom that uh, that has your audio along with it right and so now I don't know if you'll be able to hear this or not but if I push play there is some audio there and now I could sort of use this timeline to track uh, my animation but remember to do an animation like this um, you know, you're just going to go frame by frame along the line like this, right? So you're going to want to make sure you have your frame rate set um, so you don't do 30 frames a second. Uh, you know, I'd probably do like 12 or 15 or something like that if you want to. And click OK. And then, uh, you know, you can always stretch this 
uh, this out if you need to as you go along. But now I could just, you know, simply start my animation. And again, I could use like a drawing tablet or something, but just, you know, start that and then move to, you know, my next frame. And you remember, you can enable the onion skins if you want to do that to, uh, to sort of watch what happens. And if you know that you wanted your sort of ball to be at the top of the screen at a certain point in your audio file, you could just find that audio file down here and make note of it. Um, and uh, make sure that you kind of pay attention to where that is. And then there's a, the little timestamp down here. So I would know like 13 is when I want my that ball to be at the top and I could just like keep animating along, right? And so I just work my way up to that until I get to 13. And then I know it's in the right place. So this would be probably the easiest way, honestly, to do this frame by frame if you're gonna hand draw it like in the, in the um, software itself. So that's just, if you're gonna draw frame by frame in Photoshop, it's pretty easy to drop the audio in. Unfortunately, if you're gonna do like stop motion or uh, one of the ones where you bring files in, then that can be a little bit harder. So I'll show you my workaround for that. And so again, like if I brought in all of my uh, images and uh, stacked them up, so I've got them kind of in my stack here, right? You know, remember in the timeline, there's options to make a frame animation, which is the one that, you know, if you click that button uh, and do that, you'll see you know, all of these end up becoming the little frames, right? So you have to come in here and go uh, make frames some layers, and then it's in the line like that. But we don't really want to, I don't think that that's the easiest way to do this. So I'm going to just go back here. And instead of choosing the create frame animation, I'm going to go ahead and create video timeline. So I've got all of my layers here. And if I do that, you'll see what happens in the timeline. So I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. <clears throat> You can see that all of those layers are stacked up on top of each other as video layers, right? And right now they're all playing and on top of each other. And it's, um, you know, it's kind of just, uh, you know, you, you see all of them all at the same time. So if I turned an eyeball off, I would see the one that's underneath it. So what I'm going to need to do now, which is kind of miserable, but you got to drag each and every one of these uh, frames back and kind of stair step them back all the way back to the, uh, to the very beginning so that they're only there for just a short amount of time. And so again, you can vary the length, uh, the frame rate and all that kind of stuff if you want to. For this one, I would probably just leave this particular technique. I would leave the frame rate at 30 just because it's simpler. And again, if you have a million frames, um, this is going to take you a while to pull these all back. So um, I will do that now. You have to watch. I am sorry, but it'll just take me a second here. And you can always break up your animations into smaller like pieces if you want to um, so that they are, you know, it's not like you don't have a, a hundred of these layers to deal with, right? <clears throat> but now each one of these is only going to show up for just a second, right? Just a fraction of a second. And, uh, and if I, again, zoom in on it now, I'll be able to see those, each one of those kind of on their own. And so now the game is to stair step them. So you want to just drag them forward so that they're... They're only visible, they're only gonna be visible while the purple is, uh, is uh, the playhead is over the purple part of this, right? So this is the little blue thing here with the red line, that's the playhead. So if you just pull these forward and sort of stagger them all the way up, they'll only, they'll show up a little at a time. And again, there's lots of different ways you can do this and other tutorials you can watch out there in the world if you wanna go uh, look around for it. But this is just my way of showing you this as fast as I can to kind of help you get the hang of what we're looking at doing here. So, um, <clears throat> you want to be careful you don't drag them like down into the wrong, like if you put them down there, it'll put one after the other. So there you go. Okay. So now if I just hit the play button, you can see that the, uh, you can see that this is now like gonna, basically, basically going to play for us, right? So that's great. So I've got a little stop motion looking feeling and I can change the, the length of these by just extending this out. So if I wanted to like make something last a little longer, I could make that one a little longer and then just move the rest of the, the stacks down. Um, and you can click shift click them if you want to. So that can be a nice thing. And just remember that anything that I've got selected here. So now that one's going to hold a little longer in the middle. Probably can't even tell, but if you really stretched it out, you'd be able to. That anything I've got selected here, 
So if I select that one, it's selecting it over here in the layers palette also. So it's good to know that, okay, right now I'm working on, at this spot where the, uh, if the playhead comes over this one, right, right here, then uh, you can see it kind of lightly grayed out, then that's that layer that it's working on. So that's important to know. Okay, so once you get your animation kind of begun like this, then you can go ahead and you could bring in an audio track just like we did before. So just go in here and go to, you know, add audio, go find this and then click open. Okay, so now my audio is down here at the bottom, right? And uh, and I should be able to, um, you know, again, I can zoom out so I can get a little bit of a wider view of this whole thing. Um, now I can go ahead and I can like do the same thing I was doing before. I'm trying to sync up a certain moment or emotion to the sound. I can make sure that it's hitting in the right spot by just playing along, paying attention to the uh, timestamp down here. And then I can stair step all of these images as they go. So again, I'm sorry that this isn't like the coolest, most efficient way. It'd be really lovely to see the, to be able to see the, the waveform down here, but Photoshop won't let you do that. So we'd have to use a different program called After Effects to really do this properly, which I don't think we're ready for at the moment. So, so I, this would be step two, just figure out how to get your audio synced up so it hits in the right places. And then when you, you export it out, you don't even, you don't need to necessarily even um, export the audio if you don't want to. So you can always like turn that off, that um, the audio off, or you can just uh, like export it without audio, or you can go ahead and bring it over and we can delete the audio in our next step, which is gonna be to take this to Adobe Premiere and work on getting the um, video, the final video piece put together. Be very simple, first step in, in Adobe Premiere. But make sure you save your work and make sure that you um, are keeping it organized where you want it to be. And then you should be able to um, like finish off the six looping animations and be ready to move them into the next thing.